Making Roblox GFX that actually gets clicks isn't as hard as you may think. In this video, I'll show you how to create high click-through rate Roblox GFX thumbnails from start to finish. The kind of thumbnails that make YouTube videos or games completely blow up. Today, we'll be using Roblox Studio, Blender, and Photoshop. If you don't have Photoshop, that's no problem. You can use the free alternative over at photop.com. And if Blender feels too overwhelming, I'll have a full Roblox Studio CTR tutorial coming out soon. We're starting off inside of Roblox Studio and using the Load Character Light plugin to import whatever avatars we want to use for the gfx i'll link this plugin down below all you need to simply do is type in any roblox username here and you just click spawn r6 for me i've grabbed these two different bacon here variants since as you can see in a lot of ctr gfx the bacon here character is used quite a lot next we want to select them right click on them and then do export selection right here you want to make a brand new folder for your characters and export them out to there i've also gone ahead and found a few of the assets i'm going to use for this gfx just from the toolbox we're going to do the same thing as before and export these out next we're opening up blender and installing a few plugins the two plugins we're going to need today are the roblox starter rigs as well as this plugin called stutter this is a reasonably new plugin that lets you bring the studded look from games like Grow Garden directly to your Roblox models with a single click inside of Blender. It's as simple as typing in zero and clicking purchase and then downloading the zip file for both the starter and also both of the zip files from the Roblox starter rigs. Now you want to right click on the Roblox HD faces zip file you just downloaded and do extract all. After that inside of this new folder that extracts you'll have hundreds of different high quality Roblox faces that we can use in our project. Next open up Blender and go up to edit preferences add-ons and then click install right here in future versions of blender there's a little drop down right here that you need to click and then do install from disk after you've done that locate your roblox starter rig zip file right there not the hd faces just the starter rigs select it and then install it just like that install it and then make sure it is enabled right there then click install once again and you want to install the stud it plugin this time once again make sure it is enabled next you can right click on this collection and delete everything out of your project then click in on your keyboard to open up the side menu select the starter rigs tab there and under this drop down here you want to select whichever rig you want to use now we're going to go file import wavefront obj locate the file where you exported your characters to select the obj file and then make sure split by group is enabled click import wavefront obj and now you'll have both of your characters that you exported you want to go into material preview here so we can see all the different textures we're working with now you want to select the characters you just imported right click do see origin and then origin to geometry position your accessories in the correct place and set up your rigs to connect accessories you select it shift click on your rig and then do control tab to go into pose mode select the bone you want to attach it to i'm going to do the neck bone here and then do control p and then bone from there you'll see if i rotate this bone the accessory is now moving along with it select any part of your rig go into the shading tab at the top of blender and down in the shader editor tab here you want to go under the main texture click the x locate the file where you exported your characters to click this option right here so you can preview the textures then connect whichever texture it is up to your rig after that you want to go down a little bit to the face texture here click the x and then click open we're going to now be using that roblox hd faces folder we just exported before and choosing whichever face you'd like to use since this guy is meant to be sort of homeless i'm going to be using this crying face this one's very popular in high ctr gfx then just do the same for your other character if you want to use this super popular man face that i'm using right here for this character you can get it in the gfx runner discord server link in the description below next i'll go back up to file import wavefront obj and this time we're going to import the models with split by group enabled once again they're all the way over here but there they are there's another plugin that i did forget to tell you guys to install and that's the pbr essentials add-on that one lets you easily fix any broken roblox textures i'll link that one in the description as well you can install it the same way that i showed you how to install the other plugins and then it's as simple as just clicking fix it with it selected and it'll fix your texture and there we go now we have all of our stuff set up and we can get on to making an actual scene i'm gonna go up to add mesh plane add in a plane click s on my keyboard and scale this up in my shading tab once again we're gonna add a new texture to this plane and we're gonna make it more of a green color just like that then under our stud map add-on that we did install before you can just click enable stud texture and as you're gonna see that adds a whole stud texture to that plane it's obviously quite big so we can actually adjust it by going inside of our shader editor and down at the stud mapping node right here you want to pull this little node on the 
scale right here along and just add in a value now with this value you can increase it as much as you want and it's automatically going to make it scaled to whatever size you'd like so i think about 130 works for me we're also going to do the same thing to this garbage can right here just select it and then do enable stud texture and that's automatically going to add the stud texture to the object and the final step is to go up to add and then add in a camera you can go into camera view by clicking this little camera button right here this is what's going to render out when we render our image go up to view navigation and do walk navigation then you can use wasd q and e to move your camera into a good position now it's as simple as setting up your scene however you'd like to pose the characters you can select their rigs and then just switch into pose mode and pose them however you'd like in my example, I went under the Blender output properties and made it into a square by setting it to 1080 by 1080 resolution. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna render the two halves of the scene and then put them together inside of Photoshop. For lighting, I'm going to go up to add light and add in a sunlight. With it selected under the properties here, I'm gonna make sure the angle of it is set all the way up to 180. Then set the strength to three. And for a few render settings, we will go under our render properties right here and make sure the render engine is set to cycles. If you have a GPU, make sure the device is set to GPU compute and then under the sampling, the render samples right here, make sure this is only set to about 100. You want to scroll down and also make sure under film that transparent right here is enabled. This will just render the background completely transparent. We don't need many render samples at all, but if you do go into render preview at the top here, you can see what it looks like right now, which it obviously isn't the best. So here's a few things that we can do to make it look better inside a blender and then the rest will just be Photoshop work. First, select your grass here and go under the object properties under visibility and then ray visibility there is the diffuse and there's the glossy you want to disable both of these and you're going to see what that does as it completely removes that crazy green reflection that was all over the scene next we'll go back into the shading tab and select our character here and this is a really nice tip that i learned from my friend pice so huge shout out to him as you can set the iqr of the texture here down to about 1.1 and it's going to make the colors and everything just a lot more bold and clear on the character where as you can see before it was just very reflective and not appealing at all i'm gonna do the exact same for the grass right there and you're gonna see it just makes it a lot more green without all the crazy reflections and you can do that same thing to whatever other textures you want to in your scene but just like that we've got a super nice looking render whenever you're ready you can click f12 on your keyboard to render it out after it's done rendering i'm gonna go up to image save as make a new folder called render and then just save this untitled png to that folder next without moving my camera or anything i'm actually gonna swap this character out for the homeless guy and then pose up that whole scene once again after i've done that i'm going to once again click f12 on my keyboard to render it out next in a brand new photoshop file i'm dragging in both of my renders and aligning them up where i think they look good Next, I'm just going to grab this tool right here and make a selection just down the middle line of this and just select one side of it like that. Once you've got that selection, you can click on the layer it's selecting and then just click the mask button and they remain on their correct sides. The next step is to select both of your layers and then do control E and that's going to combine them into one layer just like that. I always like to edit everything in separate layers. So for example, in this situation, I think I'll edit the grass, the garbage bin and the characters all in three separate layers this just means i have full control over the different aspects of the scene to do that i'm going to use photoshop's range of different selection tools to make a selection of for example my characters i'll start off with just making a selection of my characters it's almost perfect but i will need to come in and adjust a few little bits of it like around here for example and now what we can do with this is go down to the adjustment layers button here and add in an exposure adjustment layer i'm going to control click on our mask there to grab the selection of the characters once again and i'm going to add in a use less saturation now on the exposure i can just increase the exposure there to make them a lot brighter and you can already see that looks a lot better and from there we've literally already done most of the adjustments we needed to do for the characters so i'll just go ahead and do the same to my other character real quick you will notice that sometimes the selections aren't actually perfect, especially when we go on to select the grass like we will in just a second. Using crypto mats, which I have a full tutorial showing how to use crypto mats, they're probably the best option since they're a little bit more simpler in my opinion. But also rendering in layers can be super nice as well. For the second character, I also used a brightness slash contrast adjustment layer. I think it just made it a little bit nicer there. And there we go. That's our characters pretty much done. You can group them up like that and you'll see now we have them already nice and 
and popping super bright. I should probably also mention that there is a bunch of different ways to go about doing this post effects. And I do suggest over time learning your own sort of workflow and definitely expanding off from this. This is more just the basics of what you want to do. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing as we did before using these selection tools to make a selection of the garbage cans this time. And I think that is already looking super nice. The last thing we of course need to adjust is the grass. Now this is where it can get a little bit difficult and especially when you start to look like further back in the scene you can't really see the studded texture. So what I'm trying to say is it's hard to get a good nice flat bold color when it's super contrasted like that. Because as I said before with high CTR GFX you want to make sure your colors are nice and bright and vibrant but also bold and very clear of what sort of color they are. In my situation what I'm going to do is start off by just selecting the graphs. I do highly recommend Crypto Match or something for this part because this is really tedious, especially for the grass. And after I've got that pretty rough selection of the grass there, I'm going to go down to my adjustments layer and this time we're going to add in a solid color adjustment layer. You want to see it to a nice bright sort of green color and then I think if we make it a little bit darker, it might just be a bit nicer. So something like that. Then I'm going to change the blend style of this layer to soft light. I also want to add in a hue slash saturation adjustment layer. We're going to increase the saturation a bit and I think that is what we need right there. Now we just can't really make out the stud texture anymore especially um like further around the back in the shadows we can make it out pretty clear but you know in all the brighter parts we just really can't make it out at all so to make it a lot more clearer there's a few different methods but the way i'm going to do it is i'm going to grab my selection of the grass and just duplicate it from my original layer so now as you can see there we've just got the grass in its own layer i'm going to right click on it and do convert to smart object i'm going to move it back just above my original layer there so now we've got the grass just in its own layer now i'll go up to filter and use a camera raw filter the only thing we want to change in here is the texture under effects we can increase this up and you're going to see it just makes that texture a whole lot more bold and then you can also mess around with the clarity but don't go too crazy on this because you can also actually see it makes the shadows a lot darker too so we don't want to make it crazy contrast it's something like that already going to see that just makes it a whole lot more bold i think that is super nice for anyone who is a little bit more advanced with gfx if you know what render passes are you can actually use something like the diffuse direct or diffuse indirect pass i can't really remember which and then you can just import that and use that set to like multiply or overlay or whatever blend style really works maybe adjust it with a levels adjustment layer and then of course just mask it to the grass and it'll make it a lot bolder but now we're only missing really a few things we did a nice sky i'd also like to do some nice text just to show you guys how to do that nice text and i also want to show you how to add like an outline and like that rim light that they do on the characters so let's get on to doing that to do the sky it's as simple as going on google searching up cartoony sky and grabbing whichever one you'd like this is the one i always use for my cartoony gfx i don't really know why but we'll just adjust this um we'll position it in the back but what i like to do for super you know bright skies like this is i sometimes just add in a solid color set to just a nice bright blue and then set this to, i think overlay is just too bright so we'll go with soft light but as you can see there it just makes it a lot more just appealing looking and i already think this is something i'd click on if i saw it on the home page of roblox but let's Let's add an outline to the characters. To do that, I'm gonna go under the characters. I'm gonna hold down control and shift. And as you're gonna see, it turns into a little plus when I hover them. Now I'll just go ahead and select my original render. Next, with my original render selected, I'll click control J to make their own layer right there. So now we have our characters in their own layer. Now I'll decrease the fill all the way down to zero and that's gonna make it pretty much invisible. Now we can double click on this layer to open up the layer style menu and add in a stroke. That's of course gonna add an outline you can see that it isn't perfect around some places we will adjust that in just a second but you also want to add in an inner shadow just like that you can copy these sort of settings size and choke and everything to zero i think that looks super nice i'm going to also do the exact same thing to the like foods that they're holding i think that looks super super awesome and also using those exact same selections we made of the characters setting them as masks and then inverting them you can add nice shadows under their feet As a final way to spice up your GFX, you can add text like I'm adding here just with the text tool.
And that's pretty much it, man. Your own high CTR Roblox GFX thumbnail. I hope this video helped. If it did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe. If you do have any problems, make sure to join the GFX Rhino Discord server and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.